Hey everybody, Jake here from Bearded Gear, and I finally have my full review on the CJRB Tala for you. Um, I was really excited to get my hands on this knife. I have kind of had CJRB knives in my peripheral for a while. Um, I've got a few friends who review knives or just... Uh, I'm, I'm pretty deep in the knife community between a couple of platforms. So I'm in a lot of Facebook groups that are knife related. Um, I'm on Instagram constantly and my page is just knives and all I follow are knife pages. I guess a few other bits of gear here and there. Um, and then I'm on Reddit looking at knife swap all the time and all that kind of stuff. And I've seen CJRB kind of just surge out into the, the forefront of the budget market. Um, Whereas like a year ago, to my knowledge, CJRB didn't even exist yet. Um, Artisan has been around, which is the, the brother company to CJRB, but there was no CJRB. And the newcomer, um, who was kind of just stealing all the market, I don't want to say stealing, that sounds bad, who was just <laughs> taking over um, by offering great products for fantastic prices, was Civivi. And I have... Um, I've owned one or two Civivis. Uh, my brother and my dad have both owned a couple, and uh, I've handled a few beyond those, and Civivis have always been really awesome. Um, even from their very first two or three offerings, when I first started checking them out, they were great, and they've just been pumping out new models ever since. Um, so what's kind of cool to me is to see that there's another player who stepped up um, who's kind of using a similar model. They're certainly not copying Civivi, not even close. Um, their designs are different. They're, uh, I feel like their their builds are different enough. Like you can tell when you're holding one or the other. It's not like CJRB is cloning Civivi, not even close. Um, but it's nice to see somebody else step up and uh, try to attack that price point and just cram as much good as they can in for that money. Um, a couple of years ago, I just don't think budget knives were even close to what they are now because it's gotten so competitive in this segment of the market. Um, so yeah, that leads me to the Tala. I uh, I was pumped to try the Tala because it's D2 blade steel, G10 handle construction on liners, um, deep carry clip. It's got all the makings of a good budget folder. Um, this knife is also just a hair under 40 bucks, um, which, yeah, I've been shocked by a couple of budget knives uh, lately. I also just reviewed um, the Rake P661, and that knife is under $30, and it's just crazy uh, what a dollar can get you in, in dollar to knife ratio in today's market. Um, but yeah, so I guess I'll just kind of break down my thoughts on this knife. If you haven't watched uh, my first impressions, I'll link that below as well as my pocket and cut test with this knife. Um, the things that I like most about this knife are the way it performed when I have when I did that cut test with it, and I've had it in pocket a few times beyond that. Um, this knife cuts like a dream. Um, it came nice and sharp from the factory. Not the sharpest knife I've ever gotten uh, new in a box, but no slouch, um, great edge that came on it. It's a nice tall grind that gets reasonably thin behind the edge. It's not like a super beefy thick behind the edge knife. Um, and that grind is nice and tall, comes to a nice steady flat. Um, it works fantastic at cutting. I put it through cardboard, did great. The tip pierces like crazy on soft media like cardboard. Um, I put it through some rope and it glided through about as easily as any knife that I own, reasonably. Um, and uh, I actually put it through some wood as well, just kind of did a little bit of feather sticking, and it it's excelled at it. Um, I was not expecting it to do as well as it did in actual performance. I knew when I got this knife in hand already that I liked the Ergos. Um, I like the texture on the G10. I think it looks cool and it's functional. Um, it's not hot spotty or too rough for me, anything like that. But when I got this knife in hand and started actually pushing it through material and using it, um, I found that this knife was just so good in hand. Um, the way that this handle is shaped, it's got this nice kind of contouring of the scales. Um, 
the pocket clip isn't obtrusive and like doesn't doesn't have any sharp things that are poking my hand. Um, the way that we've got a nice curve along the whole back uh, of the scale, um, and then again on the inside of the scale, it just fits into my hand really well. We've got this nice cutout here, so just holding it, it's great. But once I started pushing it through material, it like it's like it clicked more. Um, this knife is awesome for actual cutting. Um, the grind, the ergos, D2 is a good enough blade steel. Um, if you're getting a knife to be like a beater user knife, that's going to be a pleasure to get out and you got to like process a bunch of cardboard with, and then you just want to strop it after. And it's like that kind of knife for you. This is an awesome knife for that. Um, this knife makes a ton of sense to me to be one that keeps to keep around the house and use hard because it was under 40 bucks and it's a pleasure to use. There are plenty of cheap knives out there um, that I that hardly anybody would have reservations about quote unquote ruining by using them hard and doing crazy stuff with them. Um, but they're not all this good in hand, in my experience. Um, and a lot of them, you just find things that are like design features for the sake of being design features that don't really make sense. Um, this knife, I think, looks a little bit out there. Um, the blade shape, having this worn cliff, I'll call it, um, with the swedge, kind of like rhino horn swedge up here with this um, like... I don't know, curve leading into it. Um, it looks like an interesting kind of funky blade shape. And before having it in hand, I thought it was just design. But once I got it in hand and I found how my thumb likes to rest right in that curve um, and how good this blade geometry is for actual cutting and how good that tip is for piercing into material, now I get it. Um, I love that they didn't mess around with putting stupid jimping right here. Um, most people don't do jimping the way I genuinely like it. Usually I'd rather not have it at all. So the fact that this knife doesn't have jimping anywhere on it works so well for me because it's not making any hot spots for no reason just to add jimping. I think sometimes knife companies add jimping as if it's adding value to the knife and rarely does it. Um, so when you've got jimping on the spine and here on the lock bar and here on the butt of the knife and again here for some reason and then all the way up here like some people just go way too crazy with jimping and it doesn't make any sense this one locks into my hand super well without any jimping there's no need for it in fact this knife feels better i can confidently say without it than it would with it um, I like that the flipper tab makes a nice little guard here that's not hot spotty, it's not too sharp or anything, it's not digging into me, keeps me from ever sliding forward. Um, yeah, the ergos on it work so well. Um, this knife does great in pocket as well. It's not exactly a lightweight knife. I could tell you that, or you could probably tell that just by looking at it. Um, this isn't like a featherweight, and I, it's not really meant to be. Um, these liners aren't milled or anything, so... I will say it's also a little bit back heavy. Uh, the balance point, let's find it. It's about right there. So it's not crazy back heavy, um, but it's not near the pivot or anything like that. It's all the way back here. Um, so this knife is a little on the heavier side, um, but for like a user, it feels good and solid. Um, there's no blade play on this, forward and back, side to side, literally none, which surprises me quite a bit <laughs> that the tolerances are, are that good and I've put this through some pretty significant material I've played with it a lot it's like broken in I've been using it and so for there to be no play I haven't had to adjust this pivot at all I haven't done anything to this knife um, it's just great I uh, I'm really really impressed with CJRB and now that I've had this one um, I want to try more of their models. Um, I've seen lately they've got, I think it's called the Feldspar with the thumb studs on it. Um, there's another one coming out soon that I saw on Instagram. They were showing it had micarta and you could do like a milled tie clip on it and it's still pretty dang cheap. Um, they seem to be coming out with some cool stuff. And so it's nice to see 
them competing so hard. Um, and I feel like right now the value is just, it's so, so good um, with these companies like CJRB and Civivi kind of battling for that market share and for the, the top spot because they just keep offering more for less, which is really good for the buyer. Um, if you're the kind of person who's only looking to buy American made knives, then these are not gonna be for you. Uh, this is a Chinese made, um, I assume using primarily Chinese materials, uh, just budget knife. But if you're okay with buying something from overseas uh, to get a crazy good value, like obviously I am, um, then this is a really, really good option. And, uh, I think it looks cool too. I really like the Tala. Um, I feel like I liked the looks before I had it in hand. And now that I understand why it looks the way it does with how good it goes in hand, I like, I'm drawn to the looks even more. Like I've become biased about it. Um, yeah, it's great. It's got a good action. It's fun to fidget with, carries well. Everything about this knife is just kind of a, a win in my opinion. So, especially considering the price, it, it makes a ton of sense to me. Um, if this knife was a hundred bucks, I'd be a little bit more reluctant to recommend it, but at sub $40, yeah, this is really good. So there you have it. That's the CJRB Tala. I really like this knife, as you can tell. And uh, if you've got any questions about it, drop in on the comments. Let me know anything you want to know. Um, I don't like to be the, the typical tabletop reviewer who's like doing size comparisons and weights and measurements and all that kind of stuff. If you want weights and measurements, you can look online on their website or any of the retailer's websites. Um, I'm sure there are other reviewers who have put it between a PM2 and a pair of three so you can see the size and where it lands. Um, but yeah, I, I th that's not really my speed. So if you want to know that kind of stuff, just look it up. <laughs> Don't ask me. But if you have questions about why I like this knife, what I found about it in use, that kind of stuff, definitely feel free to drop in and ask me. Um, River's Edge Cutlery has these in stock. I'll link them below. Um, that's where I got mine. I love shopping through River's Edge Cutlery. They're fantastic guys um, who make the coolest Spider Co. exclusives, and uh, they've usually got great inventory, and they just genuinely seem like cool dudes to work with. So I'll uh, put it in a link down there, and uh, I know even if you're watching this right now during coronavirus craziness, um, they are still shipping. I'm pretty sure they're getting orders out same day as long as you have it in by 2 o'clock their time, which is pretty rad. A lot of other... Uh, retailers are not shipping that quick right now. So um, anyways, there's the Tala and uh, this has been fun.